Last night I was live with Atlanta Hawks fan the Dixon White talking about possible trade scenarios between the Spurs and the Hawks. Of course, there's all the rumors with Trey and DeJounte Murray. We, we talked about this a bit. Well, what do you know? It just happens to be in the news today. What is up, San Antonio Spurs fans? Hey, Atlanta Hawks fans, if you're coming in too, welcome to TSR Sports and got to talk about this. Rumor mill. Spurs possibly exploring packaging first round picks for Hawks number one overall pick. Shouldn't the Spurs make a package deal with Atlanta for their number one pick? And a shout out to the Dixon way again. He shared this with me today on the Twitter. And then I found this article by Ken's Five, who is a Spurs station in Texas. Like, all right, let's talk about it. Let's get into the article. The 2024 NBA draft is just a few weeks away. Not here soon enough, my goodness. And the San Antonio Spurs are holding spots four and eight. If they use their picks to trade up, would they shoot for the Hawks' number one pick overall? According to ESPN's Jonathan Gavani, that is an option the team is exploring. Gavani stated there are rumblings that San Antonio is possibly exploring trading up to the number one spot in exchange for their two first round picks. And it may take just a little bit more than that to sweeten the deal. Maybe a second rounder or two second rounder. We have a million second rounders, so maybe just a little, little extra spice in the, in, the, in, the, in the pot, if you will. But we'll talk about this in a moment. Quote, you hear teams like San Antonio possibly exploring the idea of packaging the fourth and eighth pick, maybe to move up to number one. A move from the number one pick could be used to pair Wemby with rejected number one pick, fellow countryman French forward Zachary Rosache, or it could be a sign the team may want another French big man in Alexander Saar. And obviously being the first overall pick, you're going to guarantee one of those guys is going to be on your team. I don't think either player is going to be around once the Spurs pick F4. I'd be absolutely shocked if either guy's available. A move like this could signal the Spurs are trying to expedite the rebuild. Ooh, it's something we've talked about on the channel a lot. Recently, Ford Jeremy, you don't mess with the cell hand, discussed the rebuild and said the team is discussing it in exercising patience. Quote, we always talk about it, rebuilding in the organization. From coaches to players to the front office, it's all about staying level-headed. We're not trying to rush it. We're staying Patient. Okay, um, there's a lot to unpack here. For the Spurs, what would be better long term? If you have the fourth and eighth pick, maybe you get players like Stefan Castle and Tijan Salon, or maybe you get Rob Dillingham and Ron Holland, or some combination of a point guard or combo guard and a wing. Get the first overall pick, you're getting one of the players behind me. What's better for our Spurs? And we talked about this in a live stream last night. What's better for our Spurs and the Hawks too? We can't just think about, you know, with this a potential trade like this, Spurs, 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 Spurs. Yes, as a Spurs fan, that's what's most important to me. But you got to look at it from the Hawks' point of view too. What's going to be best for them? What are they looking for? Are they moving, to, looking to move on from the Swiss bank and get, move on from Clint Capella? And do they think they can get Donovan Kling in at pick four and another player that can fill out the roster? Maybe a shooter if they're going to move on from DeJounte Murray. Maybe, a, who the heck knows? Some guy at eight. What's going to help their franchise? What can help both franchises? What can get both franchises in the NBA Finals in three years? And then we see the Spurs and Hawks playing against each other. That would be crazy. One in it, two teams that have traded recently and then maybe a future trade. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what I want. Two guys or one of these guys because when we look at this draft spurs fans every player has upside somewhere but they also have a downside rob dillingham too short stefan castle poor three-point shooter zachary shot Versace, can't create his own shot i i don't know what i would do in this scenario i honestly don't of course as a spurs fan the Eiffel Towers is the first thing that comes to mind when I think of the Spurs possibly having a chance to draft Alexander Saar. A lot of questions there, though. Offensively, would it work? Don't know. Are we going to have major floor spacing issues again? Zach Collins and Victor Wembyama not really worked that well together when they were on the floor. I do think Saar has a higher ceiling than Collins. That being said, he's not going to be at full potential his rookie year. And if they have... The opportunity to make this trade and draft Sar. What's that mean with Jeremy Sohan? Is Sohan going to the three? Sure, we'd have a big lineup. Hopefully, some darn good rebounding. But a non three, at this point in his career, a non three point shooter at the three? Does Wemby stay at the five and Sar move to the four? Or do they flip flop? It doesn't even matter in today's NBA. 
I will say this. If this trade happened and the Spurs drafted Alexander Starr and we have tw hopefully a Twin Towers 2.0, but they would obviously call the Eiffel Towers, the paint would be locked down with these two out there. The rim protection would be off the roof, which might not necessarily be a good thing for our Spurs because we do have a habit of keep or letting three-point shooters get open and take open threes left and right. So teams might just say, you know what? Why am I why am going to paint? Just keep firing threes away. Anyway, that's all I got on this. It's an interesting situation, and we're probably going to hear 8 million more things before draft night. I don't know what the Spurs are going to do. Quite frankly, we talked about the Hawks last night a lot. I don't know what they're going to do. And talking to my man Larry from the Dixon way, it kind of makes sense for them to move on from DeJounte Murray. It's not working with him and Trey Young. Keep Trey. And I could see them drafting Sar. Also, moving on from Clint Capella. Who the heck knows what the Hawks are going to do? That's going to be a lot of fun until then. Real quick, if you weren't in last night's live stream, we have a new family member on the channel, and I'd like to introduce him. Yep, this is Mikey, uh, a.k.a. Michelangelo from the Ninja Turtles. I went to a comic book warehouse sale that I go to on the regular, and I had given all my cash for the comics I had bought, and on my way out, I saw him. And I asked the owner, like, oh, this is really cute. How much is this? And he's like, oh, five bucks. And I was like, listen, I gave you all my cash for the comics, can you put this aside for when I come back next time you do this sale and I'll pick him up then? And he just didn't have to do it. Very gracious. He said, just take him. I think he could, he saw my eyes light up when I just, I don't know. That's just, I don't know. Love that face. And I'm a huge Ninja Turtles fan. So he let me have him. So he's now here with Baby Coyote and Headband Grogu. And uh, we'll be joining us on the live streams. And um, that's all I got. So let me know in the comments down below. Spurs fans, would you do this? Would you trade picks four and eight for a chance at the first overall pick? High risk, high reward if you're taking one of these two guys. Sure enough, this, let's be honest, high risk, high reward with pick four and eight. This whole freaking draft feels like high risk, high reward, but that's how it is almost every single draft. I was about to end the video, but I want to touch on something we, we talked about last night, me and the Dixon way. I think because last year's draft had a talent like Wemby, who was so obviously the first overall pick and a player, a franchise player, you can build your team around. Now, because this draft doesn't have this, this draft is being called the worst draft in 25 years. This draft sucks. Blah, blah, blah. So much shade is being thrown at this draft. I think there's some really good players in this draft that can help the Spurs and all the other lottery teams. But because there isn't a Wemby in this draft, the draft is being really, you know, it's like, you know, it's just getting a lot of, uh, maybe a lot of unnecessary hate. So I think there, the players are better just a lot of them have flaws. So let me know in the comments down below. Hit the thumbs up if you like the Helpful Sports channel. And subscribe to join our awesome San Antonio Spurs community. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you. And as always, go Spurs go. <laughs>